So hello everyone. Uh, thanks for joining ThinkX today. So thanks so much, Sushumna, for such a, a great uh, intro for me as well as for my topic. So today's topic is learning and memory. So these are very well-known words, but not so familiar in usage, right? So let me ask you all a question. Uh, what is a fuel to our body? So feel free to uh, use the comment section. And Chushumna, could you help me what's going on there in case if anybody are responding about, uh, absolutely, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. Food. Okay. A lot of food. A lot of people are calling out about food. Okay. Helps memory, water, exercise, sleep. Okay. okay. Um, liquid diet for some, oxygen. Okay. And sleep, Perfect. I think, energy, yes. Okay. Like you all mentioned, uh, food which provide nutrients to our body as well as uh, water, oxygen, and workouts which keep our body active. If this is called as a fuel to our body, learning is a fuel to our memory. The reason being is uh, whenever we learn new things, uh, we absorb, we save, as well as we retrieve this information and keep our memory function active. So that's why we can call learning is you know, a fuel to our body. So learning is basics of anything that we do, right? So for example, when we are born, we don't know anything that we were doing today. So we learn to walk, we learn to eat, we learn to do many things. We went to school and college and today all of us are working here today with so much learning that we had. Now, in order to excel in our careers, we have motives, we have goals that we need to achieve. So sometimes we may start from a point where we don't know what to learn, where to learn and how to learn and develop to a state where how to start all of this. So during process, we try to research a lot on what modules that we need to go through, which books that we need to go through, or the courses that help our learning keep going. But is that all important to complete learning just by going through the modules? Or is there something that we need to add to this learning in order to keep it successful? What I feel is, Whenever we learn things, it's not just important that we just grasp them at that point of time, but the problem that arrives is if we fail to memorize the information that we have learned. All of us must have encountered memory failure in our life, correct? So during our school and college, you know, uh, in spite of we putting a lot of efforts in reading things and learning things, we may not be able to recall and give the information on time. I face so many things personally in school, in exams, or during the presentations, I may miss few points. So likewise, most of you all also must have gone through, right? So if anybody have any me memory failure experiences, feel free to let us know. Just wanted to understand your experiences on the memory failure. So, Shumna, I wanted to give a minute to see if anybody would want to share their experience for memory absolutely, failure. Absolutely, absolutely. Sure. Somebody is asking why we're here again. I think very similar to what you had at the start of it, Tejaswini. Yes, I think they totally forgot why they're here. Yes. It's memory failure again. Any Anybody else? Anything that you keep frequently forgetting throughout school, exam times, missed flight once. Oh, wow. Exams, calling wife. I think right okay. now is not an excuse, but yeah, otherwise, yes. Um, history, birthdays, uh, maybe not kids, spouses, possible. Um, I get into a room and forget why I even went into the room. A um, lot of times I recollect SODs and MODs uh, might not be an excuse, but no, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Grocery list. Uh, miss going to the doctor once after booking an appointment. I guess they're quite forgot. Uh, it's weekend. Um, certain people are just forgetful, forgetting names, birthdays again, keys, TV remote forget to pay back money. That's a very, very uh, scary thing for the person who's yet to get the money back, coaching, hall ticket, wallet, quite a few of them. I, I think everybody has 
something or the other failure. that yeah there, there, there are some lapses failures right monday after sunday they forget coming to work they forget you know it's, <laughs> it's actually a friday or or either a monday <laughs> opening yeah, fridge yeah. forgetting what what they went to get it for loads wow. and loads of them so many interesting comments sushumna uh, to know like how many of us are going through this memory failure Absolutely. due to i mean everyday life something very interesting was also uh, preparing for history exam while it was mathematics oh my god and okay so some some of us have done it when we were back at school yes, preparing yes. for a different exam and realizing that you know we don't check our schedules right yeah. or uh, forgot my card in the atm after withdrawing money passwords lot of them over to you tejaswini Thanks, thanks, Paul. So, thank you, everyone, for sharing your experiences in terms of memory failure. So, before we understand why this memory failure is happening, or uh, even it's being in daily life or things that we learn, we need to know what are the stages that we have in memory. So, encoding, storage, and retrieval are the three things that what contributes to the memory. so retrieving i mean encoding is nothing but absorbing of the new information and saving that information and recalling that information contributes to the entire memory so i want you all to do one more guess work so when we talk about memory failure which of these three stages do you think is contributing to the major memory failure so you think it's absorption of the information or you saving it or recalling it uh try to just do a guess work and let us know what what contributes to the major part so we have encoding retrieval recall storage couple of responses on storage i think it's quite a mixed one where we see between recall storage and retrieval all the three of them okay so uh before knowing the whole concept of this memory uh i was under impression it could be storage or ret- retrieval but uh, to my surprise it is encoding so research says 68 percentage of the memory failure is happening at encoding stage itself which means our brain is not absorbing the information that we are learning even to save it or even to recall it later so uh, there are few things that i tried myself to make this process a little easy for me and i just wanted to share a few techniques that i went through with my personal experiences that really helped me in recent time so i just want it could be uh, old techniques to more, most of you all out there but just wanted to reinforce them uh, to get them back again to existence and start using to make our life easy so with all the memory failures that we have heard in the previous comments probably these techniques can help us to get them better so the first technique that i'm going to talk about is a uh, visualize concepts so as the name says it all so whenever we wanted to learn a new information we can relate this information to the pictures and images that we already know or construct a new picture with the information will help us to process this information easily so if we go back to our school and college we must have observed that half of our textbook is filled with pictures on all, all the sides i wondered why that was happening but later i understood a pictorial information can be processed 6000 times faster than a text information so making advantage of this definitely we can do something with visualizing the concepts that we wanted to learn and make it easy for our brain to absorb the information and learn the information so did anybody try any of this concept earlier uh, to see a shushumna viral uh, you know what strategies do you use in order to remember or when you learn new things uh it's it's a little difficult but i see um a response uh, display at pitch this is, is is one of the comments here um for me personally i think i've been a very visual person um okay. i think 12000 times more i retain information when i was really kind of and also imagination helps a lot i think that helps me in visualizing things even if it's not right in front of me so it's it's also very much processing information helps me retain things i think i will go with encoding as a response any of the panelists and anything that that's kind of helped anybody i think we can also have a check book writing okay okay, okay. interesting will 
So, uh, see, when we talk, yes. So, Suchumna, as you mentioned, that visualizing and imaginary is helping you. If you wonder why that is happening, uh, forty percent of our nerve fibers are connected to our retina. So these are directly connected to our brain, which is helping us to process this visual information more easily than anything else. So uh, behind the science, I mean, behind everything, why this is happening in the science behind is all about the nerves and how it is connected to our retina, eyes, as well as the brain. So I'm moving on to the next concept that is space repetitions. So anything that we have learned yesterday is more easy to remember than the ones that we have learned a year ago. And this is usually termed to as a forgetting curve. If you all wonder why, uh, again, I wanted to go back to the school concept. The whole year we are reading certain things and learning certain things, right? So before the examination, we try to revise everything just in one day. So it's all about, we are trying to reinforce what we have learned at repetitive and equal intervals is helping us to absorb this information more effectively and trying to save and deliver it on time. So probably you, you must be remembering uh, using a flashcards to write uh, chemical codes or anything just before exam to go through that. Yeah, that is nothing but the space repetitions. Just going through the information once in a while, uh, just revising the will help us to remember and absorbing the information very, very effectively. So next concept is the structure and organize. So usually the information in our brain uh, is formed in our similar clusters. Making advantage of this concept, anything that we wanted to learn, if you find anything is similar, you can try grouping them all together and learn it it's going to help your brain to form those clusters and process this information very easily. I would like to quote one of uh, the example that I faced. So, uh, and I think UMM guys can, uh, will be able to connect to this concept easily. So there's a topic called remarketing in Google AdWords. So this remarketing is unique when it comes to search, display, as well as to the shopping and video. So when I first learned this remarketing at individual networks, it was difficult for me to process. I was quite confused and, you know, instead of one thing, I used to answer the other things. So later I was sitting, what am I supposed to do? How to make this process easily? So I tried to group all the remarketing as a one single concept rather than reading it at a different networks really helped me to remember this very easily. So it's all about grouping the similar concepts together which will facilitate us to remember the information and absorb the information very easily so that we can recall it as and when it's required. So the next concept is going to be chunking technique. So I would say this is one of my favorite techniques which I started using recently. Uh, so chunking technique is all about uh, breaking a raw information that you wanted to learn or save in your brain into multiple chunks. So it doesn't really matter how many chunks you're going to make as long as you're able to give a meaning to these chunks and remember them. So for example, if I say I'm going to give a chocolate to any one of you, the chocolate that flashed in my head is five star because that's my favorite. It could be a dairy milk, it could be a Snickers to anything different to you because it totally depend on your own experiences. So while using this chunking technique, it doesn't really matter or you need not explain anyone why you broke them to different chunks. As long as you're able to understand what are these chunks and if they are able to give a meaning to you, it's nothing like that. So recently, like Viral, I also used to follow a notebook to make my to-do to list for the next day. But recently I started doing the chunking technique. So instead of making a note of it over the phone or elsewhere, I started making a different chunks. Like what are the things that I'm supposed to close next day? Uh, team friend, manager friend, client friend, and the personal friend, what are the things? And grouping them under these different chunks. So this is helping me to remember this and try to do my work without taking any help from any device or a book. So I'm sure this could help others as well in case if we try rather than using our books or something, maybe, you know, under utilizing our memory, start using our brain and memory would facilitate us to help to reach there. 
And the next thing is ninomic and acronyms. The moment I speak about uh, Vidyar, a lot of us would relate to a concept which is infraspectrum, correct? So we have learned this concept while we we're back in school and college, but not any time after that. But still, if you're able to remember this concept, it's all about we have broken that and made it easy for us. So hence, that is helping us to remember this information. So, uh, you know, most of the people out there who forget, you know, to go to a store and forget your gross list, probably you can try it in an acronym form. So in case if you need to buy uh, a fruits and lettuce, figs and all of it, try to make an acronym with it. And that's going to definitely help you to not miss out anything. So people who just commented in previous, uh, you know, memory failure session that they missed to buy things and if they get fight with wife and all of that, probably this is the right technique for you guys to start using this concept. And I'm sure that you avoid the fight with your wife. And the last thing is the lifestyle changes. Uh, definitely, this is not a power failure. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah I guess. Let me quickly check with her. I think in the meantime, we can quickly have the audience respond which one of these are most effective for them. We just uh, stay engaged while we get the Jasmini back. Visual concepts. Any other techniques that probably She's joining in a minute. Sure. Yeah. I'll just share something from my college days. I mean, I, I personally have a photographic memory. So uh, when I was, so maths was easy because it's numbers and you have to derive. But when you have to sort of memorize something, whether it's a biology subject or when you have to prove a theorem, uh, my brain used to index the pages of the books and the diagrams where they used to exist. And, and when you had a question in your exam, I used to, the brain used to index to that image. And from that image, I could recollect what was written there. And then I used to write it on my paper and give those exams. So that's, it's pretty uh, weird, but that's how my brain used to work. And I just thought I will share it with you guys. Uh, my mom tells me that uh, when I was a year and a half old, I used to read books. So it was like phonetically uh, words were told to me and I could recognize the image in the book. And people were really impressed that a one and a half year old kid can read books. So yeah, so <laughs> it probably came from that perspective then. So yeah, anything else anyone else would want to share? So a lot of, lot of people are attributing or probably relating it with Mike Cross as well, Babla. <laughs> I think with your experience. Hmm. Chunking, a lot of people are calling it like Google, the, the, the kind of memory that that represents. Some people prefer acronyms, chunking. And some of these, um, I guess, could be very, very helpful for us to start looking for more information going forward of how we want to segregate it together. Spaced repetition, structure and organize, I think for me was one of the most key elements in, and chunking especially too. I think that is. Cool. Just they just when he's back. We were just holding the fort for you while you were away. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Shashuna, for taking that up. So, as thank you. Yes. Yeah. As this is looking too much of theory, uh, you know, I just wanted to try something different. Um, your voice is out, they just when Guess it's an internet issue, so just give us a moment. Oh, maybe the power is back now. She has a power backup at home, so I'm guessing it could be more of an internet trouble. So, because even if you have power backup, you're if you're on a desktop, it or you, you, your your uh, modem will still switch off for that mini one right. second, right? And power will uh, the the internet will drop off. 
which is why i i am not a big fan of upss to <laughs> Yeah, yeah. UPS will only keep your lab del- your system on. The power, the internet connection will still drop off, unless you are also connecting your internet connection to the UPS, the modem. It really doesn't help. There's a lot of power cuts in Hyderabad. Is that for real? Well, Something. Not long duration ones, but there are there are some. It generally comes back and. I had a, I had a first hand experience last night. There was no power through the night. Uh, wow. No- Now that just blew off right next to the next to our house. So yeah, first hand experience. That's bad. Because is it raining over there? It was yesterday, so I, I am attributing the the surge because of the rain. Yeah, and normally what they do is they try to save the infrastructure by actually cutting out the power till the rains uh, kind of yeah. come down to drizzle, so that yeah the maintenance is easier. So, right. They just when he is back. Okay, perfect. So, uh, yeah, were we able to relate this concept to something that we already know? Shushumna, anybody are doing any guesswork? Could you help me uh, if anything is coming in the comments? Uh, you're on mute, Shushumna. I guess there's something appearing for me on the screen. The last bit is not visible clearly. If you could close that, yes. um so there is picture reading and storytelling perfect exactly the concept that we are looking at the moment is the seven piece of marketing so when we all think about the seven piece of marketing though we all know that all of them start with letter p we might sometimes miss you know one of the p's what exactly it is so when we learn anything either in a pictorial form or the way that our brain understand with a little bit of strategy that's going to help us to remember that information for a very long time hence i thought maybe try to do something like this for the seven piece of marketing to make and you know others to understand with ease so all this concept is all about the promotion is the ad that we are looking at the people are your family and the store is about the place and your favorite items are nothing but the product and the price is nothing but the bill that you pay the preparation is all about the process and finally you enjoying your food is the physical evidence so anything that we are learning not just this concept alone but if we give a little bit of strategy and direction to your brain to understand and keep that information for a very longer time will definitely help us to make our learning successful and remember it for a very long time and recall it i think pages funny right now people recall it more because this is before corona <laughs> yeah exactly that's <laughs> all the comments we received so yeah so uh, you know the reason why we are talking more about giving a strategy to the brain to remember that information see oh uh, you know we do arrange our cupboards we do arrange our table we put everything in a really organized way right so when we put things in a right manner we'll be able to know where exactly it is and we'll be able to take it out with ease similarly in a brain when you wanted to learn something give a strategy organize that information and put it in a really a good way such that our brain is able to grasp that and save that and recall as and when we require so data processing is all about any information that you look at the information goes to our brain through eyes or ears when we hear it and when we write and all of this with is a sensory organs it would definitely go to a short term memory like uh, we read a newspaper right so we don't need to remember the newspaper so it, it's okay if it's gone from the short term memory but any information that we wanted to keep it for long term we need to do a rehearsal for that we need to give a strategy in the direction so anything that's related to your own experiences if we try relating them all of it together i'm sure we can achieve this so all of us must be wondering uh, you know uh, people with great memory and memory championships have uh, a very different brain from us but not really so they do have the similar brain like what we have the combination of certain techniques is helping them to reach out there so right now if we start using the combination of this techniques we can learn and remember anything under the sun i'm pretty sure about that 
So learning less is absolutely fine, but if we are able to remember that and use that for our future endeavors, that's the best thing that we could do. So a successful learning is all about one understanding and knowing how to master an art of memorizing it. So that's all about my concept. Uh, in case if anyone have questions, do let me know. Uh, Shushumna, I think you're on mute. Any uh, questions that people have? Um, anything that you want to talk about it? Share any of your experiences. Please raise your hand. We'll probably be able to unmute you. In the meantime, maybe with the panelists that we have, um, um, anybody would want to share. So we did hear about Babla's experience about memory. Um, Fahim, we have Pratik uh, from, uh, who is our Google client partner. We also have Jose, uh, sorry, Jose or Jose. So um, sorry in case I did mispronounce. Um, any, any thoughts from any of you? I remember seeing Ronak, did not see right now. Any, any thoughts that you guys have to share about memory? No, thank you. And you did, you did, I'm not sure if you can hear me, but you did pronounce well the, my name. Thank you for that, Shushuma. Um, and if I understand correctly, uh, you were with um, the team before, UMM South Africa a few years ago. Uh, I guess the, the obvious question I would have is, based on all of the memory um, studying and learnings that you've gotten, if I am a day one uh, rep joining the UMM team, anything from your memory learnings that can help you be a successful rep? Uh, thank you so much for remembering that I work for South Africa. Uh, that's really sweet that you're calling out here. So if I have to tell someone who just joined uh, and for someone in the day one, uh, what I would suggest is uh, to have the, you know, uh, have a strategy for yourself, like how you're planning the entire quarter and uh, the planning will definitely help us to reach our goal. And the second thing, uh, being a uh, sales and consultative process, uh, you need to have that thick skin of not giving up at all. So a day could be good, bad, but still consistently, if you're able to you know, try, I'm sure that we'll reach our goal. So this is one thing I can definitely tell, the consistency and not giving up easily uh, when days are bad. Great. Um, thank you, Tejaswini. So we have, um, so Santosh has to say that with the ease of having access to all kinds of gadgets with us, uh, we tend to depend on them, but yes, nothing as powerful as memory. I think the the very least thing we used to remember all um, all the mobile numbers and the landline numbers in the past, and now if, even we can probably count with our fingers the number of you know contact details that we have on top of our mind. So I think that's one of the very fundamental things that we can relate to that technology is helping, and also probably our dependency on it starts increasing likewise. Absolutely, Shushumra. Right. Automation is directly proportional to weak memory. <laughs> I guess also um, of, of how we are trying to. O over to you, Tejas Tuni, then. So uh, it's important to have access to technology, but we should be able to differentiate uh, when to use it is more important is what I feel. So the things that we actually could deliver by ourselves uh, will you know, we should try it on our own. Like I said, uh, grocery list and all of it, we really don't need to do it with the help of a phone or anything, probably making use of it. I believe in olden days, you know, uh, during our parents and grandparents, they never had access to all these gadgets, but still they're able to do. I think all of this can be achieved only by practice. But if we start doing that practice, I'm sure we can achieve and bring back everything or uh, whatever that today we are depending on the technology and get back to our hands. So with this whole process, I feel we are underutilizing our memory, but if we start doing things, I'm sure that we'll get there. Right. I guess something that, that was called out here was wife's mobile number not to get in trouble. 
I think, wedding anniversary, I tend to misplace the date. So it's my husband usually reminding me. I, I kind of keep wondering, is it 30th or 31st? So he is more probably accurate this time in <laughs> remembering the wedding date. Yeah, I think even the limitations of the number of mobile numbers that we want to keep it on top of our mind is, is kind of very limited. Great. Thank you all for joining in today, especially to um, all, all our client partners who've joined in from Google. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, in case you have any more questions, any more um, things you want to ask Tejaswini, you can write to ThinkX directly, ThinkX at Regalix INC, or feel free to find Tejaswini's details on Hangouts or Regalix ID and write to her. Thank you, Tejaswini. I think it was a wonderful recall um, encoding some of the bits, going back with it, and trying to retrieve information and process it right now. And uh, maybe we're able to inculcate a little more of it with the techniques that you've shared with us today. Thank you so much, Tejasvi, for wonderful. Thank you, Shishuna. So anybody who wanted to try these and, uh, you know, let me know and share your experiences, how these are working. And if anybody already tried, please do share anything new to me. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you all the panelists. Thanks and to the team. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye-bye.